Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine um, if a function has an inverse, of, uh, inverse, and then if it does, to go ahead and sketch the inverse. So there's a couple things that we need to know about identifying inverses graphically. Um, when we, we can only, oh, I'm sorry, let's start this again. Functions have an inverse if they are if they are one to one, and basically what we mean by you know one to one is they're going to have to pass the vertical line test. Okay, um, that means for every output you can only have one x value. So if you look at this here, if we ver basically the vertical or the horizontal line test. Did I just say vertical? I hope I didn't say vertical. Um, the horizontal line test, and basically the horizontal line test is is you're taking a horizontal line across the function. If at any point your horizontal line crosses the graph twice, it does not pass the horizontal line test. And you can look at our first example here. This does not pass the horizontal line test. You can see that at our output value, you know, let's say that's like three, there's two values here. Okay. Now, why is it that if it's one to one and it does, or if it's not one to one, that it does not pass the horizontal line test? Well, because the reason the reason this works is because Remember, when we talked about inverses, inverses are reflective about the x equals y line. So the x equals y line is represented right here. So if I was to reflect this graph about the x equals y line, it would look something like this. Okay. And what you can see is now the inverse, that inverse function, is definitely not a function, right? Because we determine if something's a function or not based on using the vertical line test. And you can see here that the function on the inverse of that does not pass the vertical line test. So even though my quadratic is a function, it does not have an inverse because when you do draw the inverse, that inverse is not a function. Okay? So that's why. That's why it's important. The first thing we want to do is even if something looks like a function, I think all my examples here, yeah, all those are functions. Those all pass the vertical line test. But to determine if, it ha if each of those functions have an inverse, they have to pass the horizontal line test. So here you can see now if I take a horizontal line and I go across this, then that works, right? So that one's good. Now what I only simply need to do is go ahead and um, reflect the graph across the x equals line, y line. Now, the x equals y line, the best way to prove that is whatever x equals, y equals. So if x equals 3, that means y equals 3. Okay. If x equals 10, y equals 10. So you can see that's a nice little diagonal line. So to go ahead and graph this here, um, you can see that my graph, as I go ahead and reflect it, so basically all you're doing is whatever's above the um, line now goes below. Whatever is below the line, goes now above the vertical line. That's not the best representation, but you can kind of see. Um, over here, you can see even though this is getting very, very close to being horizontal, it's actually not exactly horizontal. Um, so therefore, uh, we look like everything else passes the horizontal line test. So therefore, I draw the vertical line. Now, one thing I did show is I did show that this um, did go up one point. So if I was to reflect that over, uh, my new one would go over down exactly one point, and it looks something like that. Okay. Again, all I'm doing is, you know, the best way I like to look at, you know, reflections is taking a sheet of paper and flipping it over, so you can see exactly what the graph would look like. Um, over here, this one, as we go to look to look for the horizontal line test, you can see that there's two points here, and I try to do my best to represent a horizontal line. Um, this one has no inverse. So does this one no inverse? Okay, there's no inverse because as this horizontal line comes across, you can see there's two points that line it. So therefore, even if you were to reflect it, it then the function wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So therefore, it wouldn't be a function. So therefore, we say it has no inverse. Over here again, you can see that this one is not one to one, so it's no inverse. Over here, it kind of gets pretty close to being horizontal, but it's not exactly. Then it kind of steams back down. So this one does pass the horizontal line test. Now to determine the inverse, again, I'm just going to plot the x equals y line. OK, now um, the best thing to be able to kind of do is, again, is you're reflecting this. So now, um, basically, all you're simply going to do is take whatever these points and then basically kind of reflect them over. Okay, So when I go ahead and do that, boom going to look something like this. 
Okay? And you can see, it's not the best representation, but I try to do my, my best. Uh, but what you can see is when you do that, um, that this graph still passes the vertical line test, so therefore it is a function. So again, just to kind of recap, when we're looking into um, identifying if a function has an inverse graphically, what we're going to do is look to see to make sure it passes the vertical line test. So you're going to draw a vertical line across to make sure it passes. If it does pass the vertical line test, well, if it doesn't, then, it's no, then it does not have an inverse. If it does pass the vertical line test, then you're going to want to draw, draw the x equals y line and then reflect everything over below the line. Everything below the line, over the line. And you can see in my red how I did that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you draw and determine if a function has an inverse. Thanks.